All right. So what I have in my hands over here is a very nice special keyboard known as the Ultimate Hacking Keyboard. Uh, this is version number two. Uh, I believe version one can't be bought anymore. The original one was, I think, a Kickstarter. Uh, but this is a customizable keyboard that also ships with its own specific software. So you don't have to go for a general software to configure this guy. Uh, you really get something custom with this. In this video, I'm gonna show you a few interesting tricks that you can do with the keyboard. But the first one is that you can just split it. And when you do that, uh, you can see that there's a little extension cord that they give you when you buy it. And it's, you know, nice and stretchy. So you really can choose to move it nice and far apart. You can sort of put some angles in it just to have both of your hands be nice and comfortable in a split position. So uh, that's definitely a cool property. Um, the space bar is split up, so you've got like an extra key on the, this thumb over here. Um, so, you know, your thumbs can definitely uh, move around a bit, but your shoulders are also nice and relaxed when you use it. Now, another thing that makes this keyboard quite comfortable is the fact that when you buy it, um, you get these extra legs. Uh, I've also bought the palm pads for this, which I do recommend, by the way, because it, it really is a lot more comfortable if you can rest your palm here. But the thing that's cool about these legs is that they offer a degree of tenting. Um, so you might think that uh, the base position for your hand will be to have your hand flat like this. And that makes some sense, but you can maybe also imagine that if there's just a little bit of an angle like so, that you also have a hand that's a little bit more in the natural position. Your, um, your hand next to your body is sort of straight with your hand. And if you keep it flat, you can sort of see that there has to be a twist. Um, having some tenting in your keyboard uh, alleviates that twist. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not even a huge degree of tenting that's given here, but just from this, uh, these base little legs that you get, you do get tenting this, you know, just nice enough that you notice. You can also buy an expansion that really gives you more tenting, but I found that just this is already uh, kind of nice. And the keyboard also offers you to not just to give tenting in this direction, but you can also move the legs to give you tenting a little bit more in this direction, such that your hand kind of uh, leans over. I found that to be comfortable as well, but just this is the most comfortable position, uh, at least to me. So it splits and it tents and all that stuff is great but just that will not be good enough to make this keyboard kind of special. To really understand what makes this keyboard special, we're gonna have to uh, dive a little bit into the configuration software. So this is the interface that you get when you buy this guy. Uh, one thing that I do think is kind of cool is if I were to split it together, you do get this, I would argue, pretty cool animation of a keyboard that's clicked in. Um, I think this is a really nice touch. Uh, I can also remove it again. You see it being nice and split. But from here, you can uh, really configure this keyboard uh, pretty much to your heart's content. Some things are easier to configure than other things, but just to give an impression of stuff that's easy to configure, uh, you can click any button like so. Uh, from here, you can uh, say, hey, I want this button to be a key press, or you can say, hey, I want this button to switch a layer, or I want it to do a mouse movement. Um, what you can also do is assign a macro to it. Stuff that you could add here are like more elaborate keyboard shortcuts in sequence. Um, there's also a little programming language attached to this, so you can really kind of script stuff if you really wanted to. Um, but some of the things that's just kind of easy to configure is stuff like home row mods. So the way I've configured this keyboard is when I hit F, I just get F. But if I keep it down uh, and I hold it, uh, then it becomes the left shift. And if you want to configure that, the only thing you got to do is put the scan code F in here as you would normally. But then at the bottom here, you can also add a secondary role. And a secondary role will be if you keep it pressed down. That's uh, what you can assign here. So you just add the shift, the, the command, and uh, option and control here. And suddenly, without having to move my hand much, I also have access to shift and all of that. So just to give the quickest demo of this, um, I now want to type the word this with a capital T. Shift is assigned to F and J. I can keep J pressed down. That now becomes shift. If I then press T, I get capital T. This is super nice. Um, don't have to do any awkward hand movement with my hands. I can just keep them nice and snug on the home row. Um, and that's how this works. Now, another thing that you'll notice is that you can also customize the backlight of these keys. Note, by the way, that if you really want to customize that, you uh, might want to go into the LED settings over here and don't use the functional backlighting, but really the per key backlighting. Uh, that way you can give each and every individual key uh, its own color. Uh, and just to highlight how this kind of works, I can take this yellow over here, I can uh, color the G and the H, uh, I can click Save to Keyboard now, and when I do that, it takes a small second, but now suddenly uh, these colors on these two buttons have changed. I'm gonna now turn them into more of this bluish color over here, but 
I think changing the colors is a relatively minor thing, but it's nice that it's easy to configure. So safety keyboard, all well and good. Now, one thing that you might notice with this keyboard is that it doesn't come with an arrow cluster. So there's no arrows on the uh, bottom right hand side over here. If I want to actually use arrows, I'm also going to use a keyboard combination for that. Um, the way that that works is with layers. So if I hold mod down and I keep it pressed down, then you'll notice the colors change on the keyboard. So if I hold it down, I get a visual feedback thing going that, you know, something different is happening here. But you could maybe also see from here that there's like the uh, arrow cluster uh, shape over here. That's because there's now arrows there. Um, so if I keep this pressed down, I actually have arrows back again, also at my resting position of my hand. So to maybe quickly demo that, um, if I were now to type J and L, nothing would happen in terms of arrow movement. But if I now keep mod pressed down, you can see that uh, the cursor definitely starts moving now. Now, one thing that um, is cool about this is that we can sort of mix and match a little bit. So let's now talk about how that's configured. Um, there is this mod layer over here, and this is what's activated when this mod key is pressed. And you can see here in the configuration, when this key is pressed, a mod layer is being activated. So the keyboard then switches to this uh, layout with these settings. And you can see here that there's arrows going up and down. But you'll also notice that I still have my home row modifications uh, on the left over here. And you might wonder, well, why might that be useful? And I kind of want to show you. So again, my thumb goes onto this uh, mod key. Then I have my arrows, they can move around. But if I now hold shift, you know, the arrows actually become kind of like a selection. And I can not hold shift and I can deselect, but if I hold uh, command, then I can move to the immediate start or the immediate end of a line. Similarly, you can move to the immediate start or the end of a file. And alt, uh, that allows you to skip word by word. Again, what I hope you'll notice is that my hands really don't have to move much and configuring just that is pretty easy. But it's not just the layout that you can configure. Uh, this device also has some advanced settings. If you go to the typing behavior over here, then there are also things like the timeout, as in how long does it take before when I hit a button and keep it pressed down that it's detected as a hold instead of it being triggered as a, a quick press. I have found that being able to configure uh, this really can help out a lot, uh, because if you're used to a keyboard like this where there's ba barely any travel, using these MX keys can really uh, be difficult, but all that stuff is definitely configurable from here as well. And that kind of starts bringing me to what I think is one of my favorite things about this keyboard. And that is the fact that it doesn't just allow you to have arbitrary layers, but also that it ships with something called a mouse layer. Now we've seen that other keyboards uh, also offer mouse movement, but this particular keyboard, I think has the best solution for mouse movement. Uh, there's multiple reasons for it, but if I uh, now have a look at my uh, caps lock key over here, uh, if I hold that down, that is a trigger for the mouse layer. If I just tap it, uh, then it's a backspace. But if I keep it pressed down, then the mouse layer activates. And this mouse layer has uh, one part over here on the right where I move the mouse in a certain direction. So just to show that, uh, keep the mouse layer pressed down and the mouse can sort of move around. But this button over here that used to be the mod la layer button, that can actually increase or decrease the speed. So this is kind of slow. But now look what happens if I keep this guy pressed down as well. Oh, it gets pretty fast. And again, the slow speed and the fast speed can both be configured. But I will say just the way that this mouse cursor moves around smoothly and the fact that it can speed up as well, that has really reduced my need for a mouse in total. Like that little combo over there, that is something that I've not found to be super easy to configure with other uh, smart keyboards. And, and again, it's not exactly like using a mouse. But just to give like a quick demo of something I could do, um, let's say I want to click and drag this uh, right shift and move it down to this uh, control over here. Like clicking and dragging, that's something you can do with a keyboard uh, pretty easily now. And, and also, um, if I wanted to, I could click. Uh, that is also something I can configure. The mouse click is also just a button. Oh, and maybe I don't want that, so I can hit cancel. And uh, you know, maybe I want to move that back. Um, there's, there's keyboard shortcuts for a lot of stuff, for, but for everything else, I still have a mouse available to me. And that is a really, really cool feeling. Uh, especially in my case, because I was dealing with a lot of RSI issues that uh, happened because I was using the mouse a lot. Um, this guy really, really helped me out with that. It really, really did.
I guess two more things I just quickly maybe want to mention is that uh, there are also two kind of hidden buttons. Um, you can't really see it quite clearly, but uh, there is a button on the lower panel over here. And there's another button on the lower panel over here. Uh, and you can also see it in the configurator. Um, I think originally these were kind of meant as like mouse presses. I don't think they're as comfortable to press as a normal key, but there is some extra functionality there. So that's, you know, still cool. But I guess uh, the other main cool thing about this keyboard is that the keyboard doesn't really stop here. You can actually expand this keyboard. So there are these uh, upgrades that you could buy. Um, and that's kind of in the form of a key cluster. And there are pins on the side over here. And if you don't click the keyboard together, uh, you can buy this uh, thumb cluster or um, sort of a, I've bought the trackpad. There's also other uh, things that you can buy like the, uh, like a trackball and stuff. Um, but you can also expand this keyboard. It's kind of the design idea. So in this case, um, I can add some keys that I might use a whole lot and add shortcuts to this thumb over here. And this trackpad, um, I can also use my thumb for some light mouse movement stuff as well. And this could theoretically be useful in case that you don't like these uh, arrows all the time. But, but this thumb cluster in particular also has these two mouse buttons at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to show that to the camera now. But you can see that there are also these, uh, there's a trackball in the middle, but there's also two buttons over here. And I gotta say, this is really, really well designed. And it's very hard to explain without showing it, so I'm gonna do that right now by going back to Sublime. So um, I'm back in Sublime now, and I've uh, copied and pasted a bunch of code. And notice that little trackball that I've got over here. I can put my thumb on it, and I can actually use it to scroll around. So scrolling doesn't require a shortcut or a layer. That's also something I can just very easily do with my thumb. And um, you can definitely imagine on a big screen with lots of text, maybe a web page, this is actually super duper nice. And especially if I have like the mouse layer and I just want to click something, that is now also something I can really easily do uh, with my thumb over here. This is not an, uh, a very awkward stretch or anything like that. This is actually pretty darn comfortable. And that's not even mentioning the fact that I have three extra keys here where uh, I can add some shortcuts that I really, really like. And again, this really helps to emphasize my feeling with this keyboard. This keyboard is really good at offering you something solid that helps you replace the mouse. But there's also this other aspect of this keyboard that uh, I feel I should also just really, really mention. And that is that this keyboard also comes with a little community and also a forum. Um, and I wish more keyboards would do this because this is kind of a fun little place where people can not only ask and answer each other's questions, but they can also share some cool stuff that uh, has been built. And some of the things that you see here are people who are experiencing issues. So that's definitely a thing that you might be able to expect here. But one thing I saw the other day, which I thought was just kind of cool, this keyboard also has like a little programming language that you can use to really customize the keys. I've not really used it as much because I'd never really felt the need. Um, but someone actually made a chat GPT interface that is customized just to help you program in that uh, keyboard language. Um, this was made by uh, a fan of this keyboard, which I thought was really cool. But then I also sometimes find people who are uh, talking about custom keycaps for this keyboard. And then uh, I believe this is one of the creators. Uh, there are links to what uh, you might need. So there's uh, also a knowledge base on the, the website and there's links to it. But if you scroll down, you can also see uh, fancy things that people in the community have done to customize their own board. And again, these are like, in the larger scheme of things, kind of smaller things, but it does also help to emphasize that people do really like this board and that they're sharing cool ideas and stuff that you can do with it. Uh, you will also find people on Reddit, but just the fact that that's here also makes for nice feedback to the creators. So they uh, can also pick up some signal and uh, also they're listening to what people want for like newer versions and stuff. So I guess in terms of the way I've laid out this keyboard, uh, there's not really that many fancy things happening besides these homebrew modifications. Um, I've added some extra behavior in this mod layer over here, but it's not necessarily super duper fancy. Uh, what I have done is I have added a sort of hyper key. Uh, that is to say, this key sends no scan code over here, but it does pretend to press right shift, right control, uh, alt and command at the same time. And that's because if I want to add like a custom shortcut to VS Code, I just have to hold in this button combined with any other button. And I know for sure that it's not uh, going to overlap with any pre-existing shortcut. 
But maybe to wrap up, um, I recently discovered there's another thing about this keyboard that I really, really like that very few other keyboards do. And that is the fact that you also have this on top over here. You see that it reads Mac. This keyboard doesn't just come with layers, it also comes with key maps. And the way that you can look at a key map is that you can maybe also store different settings for different machines. And that has proven to be a super, super useful feature. So um, if you're programming on a Linux machine, then you don't have access to command, which is a very typical Mac key. Most of the Mac commands become control commands in uh, Linux land and also Windows, by the way. What I can do quite easily is I have a shortcut in the function layer that can switch the Mac layout to the Ubuntu one. The settings are just a little bit different, but they are similar enough for me that I can just keep using the mental shortcuts that I'm used to. And the keyboard will just make sure that I don't have to relearn anything when I switch to an Ubuntu machine. And I can also very easily switch back to Mac. And again, I think that's something that's pretty unique. I've not seen any other keyboards kind of give you this level of visual feedback. Uh, and you can also see over here that um, I have my Mac settings and my Ubuntu settings, and I can also just uh, change the name of this guy over here. So I can go to Linux uh, instead, for example, uh, save the keyboard. And uh, you can actually see that the name would update over here uh, the moment that I switch. And again, this is um, there's just a lot of stuff to like about this keyboard. In fairness, I also think that the keyboard doesn't necessarily do everything. Um, if I wanted to, for example, configure this key if I double tap it or hold it, that it then has other behavior. Uh, that is something I would have to configure by writing some custom code. There are other configurators that make it just a little bit easier to click some of that stuff together if you wanted to. But the flip side of that coin is also the fact that you can really also write code for this keyboard. And that's also something most editors don't allow you to do. Uh, most editors, even if they're bespoke to your keyboard, don't allow for custom code or anything. They really just give you a user interface. So if you really wanted to go completely nuts, you can actually store all of your snippets onto this keyboard with some custom code. Uh, and I have seen really fancy examples in the on the forum that uh, do seem to be pretty inspiring. So yeah, uh, ultimate hacking keyboard. I can definitely recommend this to some people. Th this keyboard also has a little bit of a special place to me because it's been my first ergonomic keyboard. Um, I have found other keyboards that have features that this keyboard does not have, but just as is, the only thing with this keyboard that I think is good to keep in the back of your mind is that it is, of course, expensive. Ergonomic and proper programmatic keyboards have that property. Um, but if you want to buy the palm pads as well, as well as these key clusters, um, you know, it does get expensive. That's definitely uh, true. Um, if I were to give any recommendations, uh, I did end up buying this trackpad because I was super curious. I don't end up using it quite as much. So if you want to go for like a really proper keyboard, but just a little bit cheaper and you, you're set on this one, uh, maybe don't get the trackpad because the thumb cluster and the mouse modification really covers a lot of ground. But yeah, a lot of stuff to like about this keyboard. Um, if you're looking for a keyboard that is going to help you use the mouse less, less, and way less, this one's pretty solid. <laughs>